Small Business Boot Camp and Resource Collective for this Tuesday, April 27th. Uh, we're excited to have everybody with us. Uh, as always, we'd like to first, I sometimes forget my name. So I'm Robert Theobald, Small Business Ombudsman and Vice President of Small Business Services, and uh, glad to be here with you today. Uh, we like to start by sharing our community partners. We cannot do these boot camp sessions without all of our community partners, their time, their expertise, um, and, and their willingness to serve. And so we're, we're grateful for all of them. As many of you know, the Small Business Boot Camp and Resource Collective is designed to help small businesses work through the COVID crisis and return stronger than ever. It is a statewide initiative supported by all those community partners. And it is not just a boot camp, but it is a resource collective and a content library. On our website for the boot camp, you will find a number of different key pieces, key items. First uh, is the area where it will show the current sessions, upcoming sessions. You probably went there to register for today's boot camp. Um, and we list the upcoming sessions as well. The next part is a link to the, the resource collective. And then the greatest resource on this page of all is our content library. It's our archive. All of our sessions over the past year, um, we started these one year ago um, on April 28th uh, of 2020. Uh, so Craig is helping celebrate our <clears throat> boot camp birthday. <clears throat> and uh, throughout that whole year, we recorded nearly every session and have those saved in the archive. And there's over 140 sessions that we've recorded and they are accessible by anyone to go back and review and download the information that was part of that, making it an incredible content library available uh, at no cost. So additionally with the resource collective, we have uh, guides and resources brought by our community partners to help support small businesses. This is just a sample list of some of the key uh, items on the resource collective, you can see there's information on retail, restaurants, construction, manufacturing, barbershops and cosmetologists. A lot of great information can be found on the resource collective as well. With that, I wanna look at uh, our, the Arizona Commerce Authority's Arizona Business Resource page for COVID-19. On this website, you can find business guidance information as well as financial information. Uh, whenever a new grant or updates come out for the grants or funding information or financial programs, we update them on this, the financial resources page on this website. Uh, it is a great, uh, it is another great website to favorite or bookmark on your bookmark bar. <clears throat> now, additionally, the ACA has a number of programs to help small businesses. Uh, our small business services, we can help work with the SBA, work with the SBDC and SCORE, help you navigate with local banking contacts and share some of the latest developments that are going on for small businesses throughout the state. Our workforce division helps to support some of their programs, help support businesses that are looking to hire new employees and they have programs to help you work through that process as well as training for employees and upskilling for employees. So they have a number of great programs that can help uh, small businesses that are growing. And our Arizona MEP is the Manufacturing Ext Extension Partnership. And they are a great program for small to medium sized manufacturers uh, looking to improve their manufacturing process, their facility, um, or any of their needs, the MEP can help with them. Additionally, uh, you may be looking to start a small business or looking to start a new business line um, or start a little side gig. And our small business checklist is great for helping with that. It is a very detailed inter online interactive guide to help entrepreneurs understand the licensing, registration, and compliance needs of a business at the local, state, and federal level. And then finally, our final website I wanna talk about is the state's COVID-19 information and resource uh, website, arizonatogether.org. Uh, there's a lot of great information, not just 
uh, for business, but for anything COVID related. So with that, I wanna share some updates. Um, we have a lot of great uh, updates over the last couple of days. So uh, first I wanna mention that the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant, the porthole for applications has reopened. Um, so if you have a business that uh, falls in the category of the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant, um, you can go in and get your application into the system. They, they finally got it reopened. Um, additionally, there's been some, a number of new COVID-related tax credits for paid leave uh, that can benefit employers supporting their employees uh, for paid leave due to COVID. And these links on this page, we will post those in the chat so you don't have to worry about trying to write it down real quick. I will post those in the chat so you can <laughs> click on them um, when you need to. And then some great information, the Restaurant Revitalization Fund the RRF, uh, this link is for some general information on the SBA's website. But just this morning, minutes before coming on the, the boot camp, I got an email from the SBA with some key dates. So on Friday, this Friday, April 30th, uh, you'll be able to start your registration process for the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. And then on Monday, May 3rd, the application portal will open for that program. Um, so with that, I'm going to scroll to our next and look at next week's upcoming sessions because on Friday, you'll see we have a special session on the restaurant revitalization fund. We will have representatives from the SBA with us to talk about the program, <clears throat> as well as other stakeholders that are um, helping with that. For example, one of the things that was recently announced is that some of the payment processes that restaurants use uh, are going to be helping with the application process. And so one of those is Square. And so they're gonna come on and talk to us about how that program works as well. Um, so it's gonna be a great se special session on Friday for, for restaurants. Additionally, looking at this week's boot camps, we have, of course, today's session, Advertising 101. And Thursday, we have a, a session that I'm really looking forward to with Amber Cordoba of Prestamo CDFI. Uh, many of you may have seen her on some of our PPP boot camps that we've done, um, but she is sharing a presentation on moving your accounting online and uh, look at four different online bookkeeping software programs uh, that can help you, you know, with your small business. Uh, one of the challenges that we've seen and we've heard from many other service providers uh, across the state that work with small businesses is this small business bookkeeping can be a challenge. Um, and so this, I, I really, I'm really looking forward to this session to see how we can have other options to help small businesses with their, with their accounting. So with that, uh, we're gonna go ahead and turn the time over to Craig Boston. Craig Boston is an analyst at the Sholo uh, SPDC or better known as the Northland Pioneer College SPDC. And uh, he's had some great experience. So Craig, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and uh, turn it over to you. Thank you. While Craig's getting set up, just a reminder uh, for questions, please use the Q&A box. And uh, for interactive chat, uh, we can use the chat box. But again, for, for Q&A, we'll use the, or for questions that you may have for Craig on his presentation, please use the Q&A box. Thank you, Robert. Um, all right. Um, Robert, can you hear me? I'm yeah, just you sound good. Sure. All right, good, good, good. Good morning, everybody. Um, I am uh, very honored to be here and to just kind of go through Advertising 101, and we're going to do just some basic information. Um, uh, is doing this for so many years, I find advertising very, very um challenging, but I also find it very, very fun. Um, it's kind of that thing that I enjoy doing um, and I enjoy talking to people about it. So um, what we're gonna cover today um, are pr pretty simple things like the common mistakes and misconceptions of advertising. Things that um, many of us make um, and many of us make the, uh, these mistakes and we have these misconceptions and we do it over and over and over again, no matter how many years um, we've had uh, been in business and um, doing advertising. 
Um, simple things, why we need to advertise. Um, who is your target customer? Um, which is always uh, trips up a lot of us. Um, what do you say to these customers? And then, um, you know, where do you reach them, uh, which is getting more and more confusing each and every year. And um, the big question, everybody turns to the last page, how much is it gonna cost me? Um, so we're gonna get started in here with some of the common uh, mistakes and misconceptions. Um, the one that I hear a lot, and I think a lot of us have always, uh, you know, we, we all have said at some point, advertising is just too expensive. Um, I'm a big believer that advertising is an investment, not an expense. Um, and so we have to look at it that way. Um, I have a lot of, um, I don't need to advertise, I'm busy enough, which God bless you if you are, that's great. Um, my thing is, is when there is a downturn in your business, if you're not advertising, then the new customers don't know about you. So we always wanna try to stay top of mind um, with our consumers. Um, I can't afford to advertise because business is too slow. Um, somebody told me years and years ago, a comment that was really good that they said, you, it, it, when business starts to drop and the economy hits a little bump in the road, things are tough, um, that you can never cut enough expenses to dig you out of a hole. Um, and it's the, uh, the, the way to dig yourself out is get more business and getting more business requires getting more customers. Getting more customers requires advertising. So we kind of look at that as a, again, that's an investment in your business. Um, another one that uh, you know I dealt with for many, many years selling media um, was sales are down. So we're just gonna cut our advertising expense first. Um, we're not gonna try to look at anything else. It's just easy to cut out advertising. Um, again, that kind of goes back to number three, where when you cut your advertising, um, you're not reaching new customers or even your existing customers to remind them that you're still there. Um, small businesses, this is a huge, huge factor. Number five, I don't have time. You are an expert in doing your business. Whatever your business is, you are an absolute expert in that. A lot of times you really don't have time to do your advertising. So, um, it, it, that's a very, that's a tough situation. So we, you know, we can address that, you know, the small business development centers can help you with that. Um, and so reach out to those resources and use them when you, when you are very, very busy and don't have that time. Another big misconception is I only need Facebook. I only need yellow pages. I only, well, yellow pages for us old guys. Um, I only need radio, or I only need TV, or I, I, whatever it is. One thing, people go, I only need to advertise one place. Um, that's usually a really bad um, game plan to have um, for a lot of different reasons is, um, that we can talk about. Um, another um, misconception, and I will call this an absolute mistake, is I don't need a website because all my business is word of mouth. Um, right now with uh, mobile phones and mobile devices, your website is absolutely critical to your um, business. Um, the websites are very inexpensive now to have set up. You don't need an elaborate website, but you do need a website and you need it to have all of the information, um, the who, what, where, when, why, and how of your business. Um, and um, so do not neglect the website. Um, and again, they're not expensive in any, uh, at all. You can spend a lot of money on them, but you don't need to. Um, another misconception is as well, I listen to, you know, as a business owner, well, I listen to 1025 or I read this newspaper or magazine or I watch uh, channel 10. So that's where I advertise um, because that's what I do. Um, what we need to do is look at, is that where your customers are reading, watching, listening? Um, not where you just because you're there and all your friends listen to a certain station or watch a certain television show, that's where you want to advertise because you hear it from your friends. You really want to focus on where your customers are. Another mistake a lot of uh, small businesses have been making, and sometimes it works, and so that's great. But uh, when they say, well, my high school age child is always on social media and they're an expert with Instagram, and TikTok and everything. So I just let them handle my marketing. Um, sometimes you have to realize that um, 
you know, that, that can work, but it's, uh, it can be a very uh, a bad thing for your business as well. Why you need to advertise? Um, again, this is just to promote your business um, or your brand to new customers. Uh, the theory is, is that it takes a customer three touch points before they actually um, start to recognize you and uh, will come to your location. So a three frequency, a three, whatever, three different messages that you have to deliver that customer before they go, oh yeah, that's who it is. So we need to consistently be out there promoting your business and your brand to those new customers. Continually keep your business top of mind with your current customers. Um, I worked extensively with a mattress, the largest mattress firm in Arizona for years, many, many years. And they spent a ton of money in advertising. And I always ask them, I said, I don't understand. You spend so much money and you have such a high frequency of purchasing in, in your media, but people only buy a mattress every seven years. Why do you do that? And they said that they are, they want to make sure that they are always top of mind every seven years when it comes time for you to buy a new mattress. So they go, we will never let up. Um, it was a very successful um, strategy for them. They were always the number one mattress store in Arizona. Um, build brand recognition. So customers choose you when it's time to buy. Again, uh, that's um, it kind of uh, goes in with number four there, um, elevate brand awareness to increase your tr the trust. Um, trust is such a critical factor with getting customers uh, to come in for the first time, have a little, uh, build that uh, brand recognition um, so they remember you. Again, that goes in with that top of mind. It's all kind of related together. Increase your sales. I, there's very few businesses. In fact, I'm not sure I've ever run into one that said, I don't need to increase my sales or I don't want to increase my sales. Um, they, um, everybody wants a little bit more, just a little bit more. Um, and so, uh, advertising helps you increase your sales, connect with the community where your business is another, when we're talking about rural communities, um, it's so much more important, you know, those little touch points out there and letting the, uh, the community know what your business does and what your business is doing for the community. Um, whether you are a coffee house or a restaurant or an industrial um, type business, you still have the opportunity to connect with your community, um, which is fantastic, getting involved in the community events and things like that. So um, uh, especially in the rural communities, we love our community. We love where we live and we love to support the businesses that support our, our place of uh, residence. So that's really a, a key factor for some of our smaller businesses. Maintain sales and a customer base during slow periods and economic downturns. There's plenty of, uh, just Google this if you want, but uh, there's plenty of case studies showing that um, companies that continue to advertise and continue to uh, reach their customer base during slow periods and economic downturns come out of those economic downturns exponentially better than their competitors who did not. Um, I know it's always tough to go, oh, I wanna hold that money back. I don't need to advertise because the economy's in the tank, um, but uh, they, you actually uh, may uh, recover much faster and much quicker uh, and, and better off um, when you do that. And there's a lot of case studies out there that talk about that. So we wanna definitely uh, keep um, some presence in the um, advertising world when we are in an economic downturn. Most critical thing I believe in advertising is this slide right here. And everybody's gonna be different, but if you have the opportunity, get out a sheet of paper as we go through this and start thinking about your ideal customer. I call it your target. Um, I call it just a big T, right? So we're gonna go and look for, well, who our target is. Um, it's very often that we sit there and we talk to somebody um, and they say, well, my customer is adults 18 to 64. Um, so you might as well sell, say, you know, the entire world is your customer. Um, and that gets very, very expensive to reach that big of an audience um, in any kind of medium that you might use for your advertising. So target, 
be specific. Who's your ideal customer? Not your customer, your ideal customer. Who is that customer that spends more money when they're come into your location or buy from you or use your services? And who is that customer that comes more often? Um, at Domino's Pizza, when, when I was the marketing uh, director there, we had a, a, a system and it was very specific. The average customer ordered every 31 days. If we could increase that and have the average customer order every 28 days, the amount of gross revenue coming into each one of our stores was massively different. I mean, it was, we did a lot of money in pizza sales and it was just, but if you just get that customer to come a little bit more. So who's that ideal customer that you know you can get them to buy from you more often? So we talk about things like age and don't, and, you know, don't say, hey, I'm a coffee shop. So anybody that buys, you know, anybody um, that wants coffee is my customer. Now get specific. Who's your ideal customer age? You know, they're 18 to 24. They're 30 to 34. They're, a, they're, a, I mean, you can get really specific. You can say it's a 41 year old female who, and you know, we go down this list. It's a 41 year old female. They live in this zip code. They, their household income is $41,000. Um, they have two children at home. The children are elementary age or high school age. They go to these schools you know, and get very, very specific. And there's a reason why we want you to get very, very specific when you start looking at your ideal customer, um, because it makes it much easier to figure out where you're going to advertise. Um, so look at the lifestyles. This is not, th these 10 things are not the, uh, you know, the list that you have to use. You can look at your own things because every business is a little bit different um, and the industries are different. But uh, these are just some of the ideas. You know, what's their lifestyle? What do they do? Are they outdoorsy? Do they go hiking? Do they mountain bike? Are they foodies? Do they just love to go to restaurants, you know, or, and, and taste wine and all that? Or are they homebodies? Do they love to just stay at home and um, consume media from their laptop or their television? Because this is, again, this is the, the where we're going to start talking about. If they're outdoorsies and they love to go outdoors, we need to market to them differently. If they're foodies and they're in restaurants all the time, maybe we need to start thinking about how to reach them where they're at. Um, where do they shop? Are they people that shop at a, um, you know, a, a shopping mall? Are they going into the malls or are they doing everything online? Um, uh, again, where do they eat out? Are these fast food customers or are these people that are eating out at Morton's Steakhouse? You know, that type of a thing. Um, again, and where they go, do they travel? Uh, COVID's changed things. I mean, it's definitely changed the way we travel. Um, so are they traveling? How are they traveling? Where are they traveling? When are they traveling? Are they, do they have kids at home? So they're only doing spring break, fall break, and a couple of weeks in the summer. Um, are they staying in state now with COVID? Things have changed a lot. Are they, you know, what are they doing? Are they uh, the, you know, the vacation rental type people? Are they going to all the national parks here in Arizona? Are they starting to get back on planes? What, what is your ideal customer doing? Not what the community is doing, but what your ideal customer is doing. And another one now is, are they working from home? Or are they going to the office? Because commute times matter. Um, uh, and if 80% if of the people are no longer commuting to and from the office, you need to think about what you're advertising. If you're doing out of home advertising, you know, how, how many people are driving by your billboard? Um, there's still a lot of people doing it, but is it the ideal customer that you're looking at if all your ideal customers are working from home? So we need to think about that. So take that list, add to it, please. Um, and also you can always put in the questions, uh, the Q&A box, if you have anything you wanna add to that that I missed because um, definitely this is just a starting list to, to figure out who your ideal customer is. Um, now we're gonna talk about, you know, what do you tell your customer? You've done this work, you've done this research, you've put together this, this perfect target customer. Um, what are you going to say to them? Uh, the real thing is here on this is that um, you need to decide whether you're doing a branding campaign or a call to action campaign. Uh, those are the two types of advertising that we do. We either brand our business or we call a customer to do something very specific. 
Um, you can blend these together um, at times. It has been done, um, but it uh, can also confuse the message. Um, call to action campaigns can still be branding campaigns. Um, and a branding campaign can still sort of have a call to action message in it. But um, for this purpose, we're gonna take them separate. A branding campaign, put your company story and message in front of an audience and the goal is increasing brand awareness and improving brand equity in the mind of the consumer. That's you know the definition in the dictionary. Um, we're gonna talk, show you a couple examples of branding campaigns, but think in your mind right now of branding campaigns that you know of. You know, where have you seen a message that they're not saying, hey, come by today. It's just branding. They're just putting a logo out there. They're just putting something out there and they're not talking about a specific sale or do or a specific call to action. It's just a brand. Um, think of some of those, the best branding campaigns that you've ever seen. Call to action campaigns. This is easy. This is content. It's intended to induce of behavior from a viewer, a reader, you know, a target consumer to perform a specific act. Um, so they, they, it's going to say, call today, buy now. Um, you know, they, uh, everybody's probably seen the my pillow. What was it? Uh, my pillow um, ads. You know, buy now and we'll send you forty four free ones or whatever they happen to talk about. You know, there's there's always those the, the catch. You know, but buy now and get one free type of thing. Um, come in. Car dealerships are really big on call to actions. You know, I've got this one particular Chevy Camaro and it's ten thousand dollars off. Come down and buy it today. Type stuff. Um, so those are the two campaigns. We'll go in here. These are some great branding campaigns. Um, VW way, way back in the day. Um, for us guys that remember these things, car guys, VW had Think Small. It was fantastic and it really worked well for their Beetle. Um, Nike's Just Do It campaign, a branding campaign has been like that um, for, I, I don't know, are we going on, on 30 years, I think, with it? Um, absolutely incredible, incredible uh, branding for uh, Nike. Have a Coke and a Smile, great branding campaign. So um, those are the type of ones. Where's the beef? If you remember the old uh, commercials for Wendy's, um, uh, the uh, Old Spice campaigns, you know, I mean, it's a, what a brand. It's just kind of like you're trying to um, bring the, you know, that message out there to the community, to all their audience, you know, about just it's Old Spice. They're not saying go buy it. They're just talking about the, the brand. So um, the Dos Equis was another great branding campaign that really stuck in people's minds. Call to action campaigns are very simple. You know, find uh, the top left one there is find a jack in the box and it's got to click. Click here to find a jack in the box. Um, you've got other ones like uh, Kohl's. Um, this is one of them that I just, uh, uh, the, the Williams and Sonoma, that's a, uh, an ad, that, you know, social media ad. And it's basically, um, you know, they're, they're talking about a knife skills workshop. So that's kind of a, hey, watch our knife skills workshop. Oh, and by the way, you get a special deal when you sign up. Um, the other one here is a uh, one that uh, I found on a local uh, out um, a coffee shop up here in the White Mountains. Um, and they have uh, two free spots for a Saturday's paint event. And it says first come first serve, but it says call now. It says two free spots, you gotta call now. Um, so um, that's kind of a simple call to action campaign. There's thousands of them, but when you're looking at advertising and you're watching it, really kind of think of those two branding campaign or call to action campaign. It's really important to know what direction you want to head with your advertising, because that is going to uh, also help you decide where you're going to do your marketing um, and advertising. Is there any questions? There's no questions on that right now um, that I can see. So um, <laughs> How do you reach your target? And where do you reach your target here is, um, I did this slide specifically for this reason. It looks confusing and it's really, really confusing. Um, so there's a, um, people who have put together, oh, how many types of advertising marketing are there? How many types of marketing are there? There's over 40 some types of officially recognized marketing and that's what's all on here. 
it's a disaster and it confuses me. And I've been doing this a long, long time. And for as, as a small business owner, it really confused me. Um, so that's one of the reason this is on here. Don't try to read them all, but this is going to tell you there's a, um, a lot of different types of marketing um, that people are out there pushing and saying that they're the best at or whatever. And so we want to really get past that, um, that confusion and we want to just narrow this down and take the complexity out of uh, trying to decide which marketing channels we should use. Um, we're going to talk about traditional media today. We're going to talk about digital media. Those are the most common. Um, this is not a complete list of traditional media or digital media when we get to the next slide. Um, and within this, I, I just did it on the first one on radio, um, because within each of these traditional medias, as you guys start to look, you can get very confused because as a small business owner, you're going to have a salesperson come in and they're going to talk to you about radio, TV, newspaper, magazines, direct mail, whatever. And under each one of those categories that they're experts in, there's going to be a lot of subcategories. So in radio, there's five seconds, there's 10 seconds, there's 15 seconds, 30 seconds, 60 seconds. There's endorsements. There's all these different things. The same with TV and cable. What's best for you? That is a very difficult question to answer in a very short period of time that we have here today. So I do recommend that you get some, uh, some help. Um, your small business development center people, uh, reps can help you with that. Please reach out to them. I will not tell you that in radio, television, um, one length is better than the other because it really depends on what you're trying to do with your message, who you're trying to reach. So television, there is so much new stuff in TV and it, with the cable and the TV. Um, I mean, there's opportunities, if you guys are watching, there's opportunities where you can press your remote and it's automatically during an advertisement and it's automatically gonna register your email address that's associated with your account to this company and they're gonna be able to send you direct mark or, or email marketing uh, right to your um, email. And all you have to do is press something on your remote. So there's a lot of amazing technology for you to reach your customers um, in all of this new, uh, these new mediums that are coming out. Newspaper, it's still there and um, it's still working for people. So, you know, don't discount it. Magazines, direct mail, billboards, under billboards, there's out of home, there's bus shelters, there's digital billboards now, there's airports, there's, you, you can put your logo on the side of a building in downtown Phoenix or Tucson. Um, it, it's crazy what you can do with signage nowadays. That's another technology that has improved um, drastically in the last 20 years with um, huge, massive um, banners that they can put on things. So, um, Door hangers. <laughs> uh, I'm, a, I'm a pizza guy, so door hangers were huge. Um, online, your website. We'll talk a little bit more about digital uh, uh, marketing as well, but cause related, get involved in your communities, trade shows for our uh, businesses that need to be out there in the trade show world. Trash advertising. Trash advertising is why McDonald's puts their logo on a cup. Um, and on their French fries and on their bags because people th unfortunately throw them out of the windows of their car and they lay on the side of the roads and guess what you drive by and you see McDonald's and you go mm, I'm hungry um, so trash advertising does work sports and entertainment celebrity endorsements vehicle wraps vehicle wraps have become uh, less and less expensive over the years and uh, you know there is dozens and dozens of more traditional type of media that's out there. Um, each one of them has its, um, its niche and it does work, um, but you have to really think about that when you're looking for your specific ideal customer. So digital media, a lot of people think of Facebook and Instagram, Facebook and Instagram, that's all I need. All I need is Facebook and Instagram because that's my digital media. Well, what we wanna talk about here and one of the reasons why you need a, a website as well is digital media has, you've got search engines. And this little graphic here, if you look at it, kind of down towards the left side around uh, say 10 o'clock, it'll say search engines. And under search engines, you've got, you know, the ask.coms, the AOLs, the Googles, the Yahoo, the Bing. Um, so that's where your SEO comes in. And there is some fantastic webinars in the last uh, several weeks on, 
um, digital marketing, search engine optimization and what you should be doing. And I recommend if you have a chance, go back into the, um, the Small Business Boot Camp Resource Collective and look and watch those um, webinars. They, they're fantastic um, on specific areas of this and why you need a website and then how you get that, uh, that search engine optimization done properly without spending a ton of money doing it. You have your directories. Um, you know, your Yahoo's, your super pages, the yellow pages, that all, all that stuff kind of moved online. So those still exist and they're still advertising within them. Sites and blogs, um, just, I mean, there's so much stuff digitally there. Um, then you go into content sites, um, which, you know, we is, is growing rapidly, but really Venmo and uh, or, uh, Vimeo and uh, YouTube are the biggest ones. YouTube is huge. Um, then you get into reviews. Now's where we get into start, things start going like, okay, now I need to really pay attention to what's out there with all of the reviews. Yelp, um, make sure you're as a small business, especially if you're in the service industry and the food, the restaurants, things like that. Um, pay attention to your Yelp reviews. Um, social media, we all know that it's Facebook, it's Tumblr, it's TikTok, um, it, it's Twitter. And again, each one of those are very, very good in their own right. And you have to really figure out where your target consumer is, um, not which one you like the best. You may love Facebook because that's where you get to see all your family and friends, but you're trying to reach an 18 to 34 year old crowd. Um, and guess what, 18 to 34 year olds are moving away from uh, a social platform like Facebook very rapidly and moving in um, to Instagram and things like that. So you really need to focus uh, where your target consumer is, not where you are using your personal social media. So location-based services, another thing we wanna, you know, that gets into, the, you can really, um, Go down the rabbit's hole with this one, looking at things, but you want to make sure your website is up to date. You want to make sure that it's optimized for uh, social or, or uh, sorry, for uh, small screen platforms, your phone, um, which is very simple to do. And uh, because everybody is going to uh, want to know where you're at, what you're doing, and um, all this stuff is tracking you now. And then you have your deal pages where you can advertise, but you can also run deals for your business, depending on what kind of business you're in. Um, and that uh, is something that uh, we remember Groupon and Living Social and things like that um, can still be very, very valid places for you to uh, market to your target customer, um, just depending on what your business is. And so what happens is, is this just gets very, very confusing for a lot of people. So we recommend that you start small. Don't get crazy and go, I got to be on radio, television, got to be in the newspaper and I got to be on Facebook, Instagram. And so all of a sudden, like, you know, at four o'clock in the morning, you're jumping up and making TikTok videos because you got to be there too. Don't do that to yourself because it can get overwhelming very quickly. Um, and um, what we learned is, um, uh, you know, you're better off doing one or two um, marketing um, mediums and doing them really, really well than doing seven or eight of them and doing those poorly. So focus on the ones that you uh, are, that are gonna reach your target consumer and um, then uh, pick a couple and start small. So, where do you reach them? You know, this is goes back to all of that stuff we talked about. 40 some different marketing types, um, traditional media, digital media, you know, all these different things. So ask yourself these questions. Get this slide, take a picture of it, write it down. Um, and every time you think about what you're going to do, every time a salesperson walks through your door and says, I got the greatest advertising you've ever seen on the back of register tapes. I got whatever it is, whatever they, because you're always going to have salespeople coming in and trying to sell you their thing. Um, ask these questions. Does it reach that target customer? Does it really reach the target customer? Does it fit within your budget? Um, can you deliver your message to the target audience? Which means, you know, back to your branding campaign or your call to action campaign, will this medium allow me to deliver my message to this target audience. Um, that's very critical. Um, then, 
here's the big one now. Can I measure the effectiveness, effectiveness of my campaign? Is my phone gonna ring and am I gonna be able to track it? Um, I did a campaign years and years ago when I was at uh, uh, the pizza places and I did a, uh, believe it or not, it was a radio campaign. And every afternoon, every traffic report said on Tuesdays said it was a two for Tuesday deal. Call now, buy one, get one free. It was very simple. Two pizzas for the price of one and every traffic report. I could sit in any one of my stores and I knew when a traffic port report ran in the afternoon because the phone would start ringing and every order was a two for Tuesday. Everybody wanted a buy one, get one free. Now that's the archaic way of tracking the effectiveness of a campaign, but that can be done. Um, with digital media now and social media, you have some amazing dashboards, um, part of those uh, mediums that allow you to measure the effectiveness of your campaigns. Um, watch that, manage it, see if there's ways to improve it, tweak things. So really work on uh, measuring of your the effectiveness of your campaigns. Um, the, the, um, does it fit within um, what else you're doing for marketing? <clears throat> so again, this gets to that point where you might have too many um, irons in the fire. You might be doing a branding campaign in one area and a call to action campaign over here. And you might be doing some community events and you might, and, and all of a sudden you start spreading yourself too thin. Um, make sure you're delivering the same message um, out there. I see um, a lot of companies make mistakes where they're trying to be something to too many different areas and the, uh, their branding messages get confusing over the time. So does it fit within what you're doing and is it easy on you? Um, I, if, and again, as a, uh, as a marketing director for the uh, Domino's Pizza, um, this is something that I had to remember all the time. All advertising will work if you deliver the correct message to the correct target customer through the correct channel. It, every bit of advertising works. I don't care what it is. Um, if it's just leaving business cards on the counter at the local car wash, that can work. Um, you just gotta reach the right customer through the correct channel. And um, that's a critical thing to remember. So. Um, when I, I love people who always say, well, radio didn't work or TV didn't work or the newspaper didn't work. Um, you were not doing one of those three things. You were not delivering the correct message to the correct target through the correct channel. That's why it didn't work. All right. How much is this going to cost? Um, everybody wants to know the last line. Um, I can't answer that question. <laughs> Advertising done well is an investment. It's not an expense. And we have to get that out of our heads that advertising is an expense. Um, yes, it shows up on the expenses, but it is an investment. Advertising costs can be a tax deduction in most cases, which thank you to our government for allowing that to still be. So um, make sure that uh, you keep track of all your advertising costs. Um, one of the great things that the small business development centers can do is we have uh, some programs, your CPA can probably do this for you too, but there's some programs that uh, uh, report from businesses in your field, um, sometimes within your state, region, things like that, and we can actually run some reports and get you a good idea of what you're advertising as a percentage of your revenue. Um, I can tell you, I ran, you know, about uh, with my restaurants and with um, uh, the uh, pizza restaurants that I was a marketing director for, you know, we ran around eight, nine percent of sales was a marketing budget for us. Um, so sometimes you got to be a little bit larger because you're a new business. So you may, as a new business, your marketing expenses may be 15%. And then as you grow and you get customers and you start to get some of that repeat customers, you can lower that uh, marketing expense. But it varies depending on industry. So um, it really depends um, on your business and how you're doing and your, uh, your local SBDC um, rep can help you really define that uh, percentage. Um, or you can just have a fixed cost. Um, I, I will, we'll get into this here, but you know, if you're a Facebook marketer, it's pretty simple. You can say, look, I got a hundred dollars a week. And when my hundred dollars a week is gone, that's all I got. 
Um, use it wisely. Uh, make sure you're boosting your posts properly. Um, spend your hundred dollars. Make sure you're boosting proper posts. That's a whole other uh, webinar in the past, but talk about you know how you do social media marketing. There is some webinars on that, um, but make sure your social media marketing, your posts are done right before you boost them. Because if you boost a bad post, it's not going to matter. Um, you're just wasting money at that point. Um, so work with uh, your SBDC people, work with uh, the ACA webinars that we've got on here. Um, they're fantastic resources for you. And expensive does not always mean better and free does not always mean bad. Remember that when you're doing things. Um, Craig, we lost your voice for a second, your sound. It's a percentage of sales or a fixed amount, but stick to your budget. Um, and um, hold on, I just got a message that my internet was bad. It's, I hope you can still hear me. Yeah, can you go um, back and Craig? Can you go back and repeat uh, what you just said on? I think it was number five. Okay. And number so, four, and number five. Number four was expensive does not always mean better, and free does not always mean bad. Um, there are some very expensive advertising mediums out there, and there are some free ones, and. You just got to make sure you're reaching your target customer. Choose a percentage of sales or a fixed amount and stick to your budget. Here's something that uh, a lot of small businesses make a mistake with is they say, all right, here's my budget for the month. And then some slick salesperson walks through the door and they've got the greatest thing since sliced bread. And you go, well, it's only another 500 bucks. All right, I'll dig into my profits a little bit and spend that $500. Um, really choose your percentages, stick with your budget, um, and then adjust your budget maybe down the road to buy that new fancy advertising that you really, really want. Um, and make sure everything you spend money on meets your goals of reaching your target customer. If it doesn't reach that T, that target customer, don't spend money on it. It is not worth it. Um, and I know there's a lot of cause related things that we want to do because that's what we want to do. Well, great. Take that out of your profits and then do it on your own. That's great. But from a business standpoint, spend your money where your target customers are, and it's going to pay huge dividends in the long run. Um, going back to uh, contacting us, you know, you contact your uh, small business development center in your local area. Um, the easiest way to reach us here uh, or reach uh, myself, if you have questions, is uh, phone numbers there, um, the statewide SBDC. Um, if you are not a um, small business development customer, jump on that website there, register um, in your local area. Um, and then again, I cannot stress enough, go back and look at some of these webinars that are part of the small business boot camp. Um, they're there was one last week that I'm sitting there going, wow, this is great. I've been doing this my whole life and I didn't know that. So a um, lot of great things there. Excellent. Thanks, Craig. You had a great presentation. Let's jump into some Q&A. If you have questions for Craig, um, please post those in the Q&A. And Craig, we do have a question in there that's a very good question. Um, it's a very simple question. It says, what is the best way to advertise when you're a B2B company? So business to business company. Well, um, <laughs> I think that uh, th that's probably, I was going to stop sharing my screen here and I think I messed up. Um, that can be a very uh, open-ended question, um, depending on the industry that you're in. Um, if you're able to reach your target customers, um, your the other businesses, um, I think one of the greatest ways to do it is just walk in their front door and set up meetings face-to-face. Trade shows, um, industry um, publications, industry websites, um, things of that nature, where you are absolutely um, reaching just those businesses in which you're trying to reach. So um, I love face to face. That's me. Um, I love, you know, I'll stand at a trade show. Did that when I was selling franchises. <laughs> I will definitely. Um, get out there. So B2B is, um, I think, your industry publications, but it really truly depends on the industry that you're in. 
um, on, on how to reach those customers. Because as a B2B, maybe your customers are all over the world. Um, so there's, uh, we, we need to look at uh, online publications that reach those people. Um, the other thing is there's, you know, some like LinkedIn, um, get on LinkedIn. Great thing about LinkedIn is, is it's free and you can really reach out to your target customers that way. So we have a couple more questions in here uh, that are real good. It says, what is the difference between branding and marketing? Well, I think marketing is the term used interchangeably with advertising. So, I, you know, in my opinion, you look at the dictionary and see the difference, but marketing is reaching your target customer. Branding is actually creating a campaign using marketing channels to um, increase that, that the awareness of your company um, to a target consumer. I answered that right. Yeah. I also <laughs> like to think of that, Craig, is uh, um, we all know what the swoosh is. And we say right. swoosh, we, we even just that word, we think of the, the brand, which is Nike for shoes. Right. So they've established that brand and that branding. We know what it is, but um, I don't own a pair of Nikes. Sure. They're and, marketing uh, and it's, you know, for, for various reasons why. But uh, I used to, but it's their marketing is what helps me to want to buy them versus um, their brand. Um, you know, a lot of people can identify the Starbucks brand, but they might go to Dutch Brothers for their coffee. Um, so uh, we, we had a great, uh, for Marsha, we had a great branding uh, boot camp a couple weeks ago with uh, Mike Jones from Resound Creative on how to tell your brand story. And you did a good job explaining some of the Very differences good. between branding and marketing and how to establish your brand. Um, so we also had another question in here. Um, it says, also, where can we get market size information for Arizona for a different industry? So Craig, I'm gonna go ahead and address that one. Yeah. Um, one is the SBDCs throughout the state have access, access to some tools um, that they pay for the licenses for that can help with identifying market information and market standards. But there's also another tool called Size Up Arizona. And that's a program that APS is funding uh, for businesses across the state. There's no cost to use it, but it allows small businesses to access some of the industry tools that large businesses uh, pay a lot of money to, to get. So I'll post that link in the chat. Um, and so everybody can have that. Uh, we also did a boot camp on that a while back. It is available in the archives. Um, so you can you can find that. I'll have to go back and look at the the week, but I just posted the link for it in the in the chat box so you can access it. Um, so another question Ray had, good question, is how do you determine your ROI for advertising? <laughs> oh, that's a uh, that it's a million dollar question. Um, that comes back to how do you measure your results? Um, I will tell you that the ROI, in, in my opinion, ROI doesn't always mean dollars in revenue. Um, because it, again, a call to action or, or is it branding or is it can, keeping your competitor from taking that form from you? And this goes back to, again, I used to spend, I'm just going to give you guys some uh, crazy stuff, but way back in the day, it cost about $35,000 to do what they called a total market coverage piece of coupons. And as the, as the big pizza guy in town, I bought these things at least once a month and I, I, about 15 times a year. They have $35,000 to send out this advertising. But if I didn't buy it, my competitors would. So I would spend $35,000 15 times a year to, to buy this piece. And my sales would only increase about 35 to 40,000, maybe 37,000, $38,000. So my ROI is terrible on this, right? <laughs> it's just ridiculous. But if I didn't buy it, 
my competitor would and their sales would go up and mine would stay flat. So from a cash flow standpoint, I considered that really, really good ROI. Um, and every medium's a little bit different. I mean, I'm back in the day when we used to do direct mail pieces and we just prayed we'd get like one and a half percent return, one and a half percent of those to come back, you know, and, and then our ROI would probably pencil out. Um, so it, it really depends on each type of marketing. You have to choose what kind of ROI you want and then really focus your advertising efforts um, on that. Um, we can also, you know, a lot of us that have marketing experience can look at specific things and figure out whether or not um, your ROI is, is worth it there. Um, so again, that's a, that's a tough question to answer. It really, do, it, it really, really is. And Robert, I don't know if you have any input on that one or not. You know, I think about that and uh, it also, you know, based on from other presenters we've had and other marketing sessions, the ROI you need to have before you even embark on that avenue of marketing and advertising, you have to have your goals clearly defined. Um, because if you don't know what your goal is for it, then you don't know if you've got the appropriate ROI. Right. And the ROI might like, like you said, might not be sales. It might just be clicks and getting someone to stay on your website for a minute, you know, or for 30 seconds or for two minutes or, Right. You know, just just opening the email um, to, to see what the so it all depends on the on the, the method, but you have to have those goals ahead of time. And if you're not sure how to set those up again, there's a lot of good no cost service providers such as the SBDCs that can provide support uh, in helping you with that. So we're going to jump to our last question, and this will be a perfect wrap up because I think the answer, Craig, you're going to have is not going to be a traditional answer. It says, for an upcoming handyman business, in your opinion, what is a good vessel for advertising already on Facebook and other social media platforms? Mm. Uh, next door. Um, there's a, if, you, if you're not familiar with that, there's a, a, an app out there called, um, I was going to try to find it on my phone here and show it to you because it's, everybody does this thing. But um, there's this little this little app out there, and it's called it. I probably can't see it on my phone, but it's called Next Door, um, and it is as a handyman, you probably want to work within your community. Um, you want to work close by. Get on Next Door. I think that's one of those great things that um, is out there. That's kind of a hidden little gem um, that I have found that works absolutely wonderful for community based um, small businesses and handyman businesses. Um, the other thing, <laughs> believe it or not, I'd go meet every one of your Ace Hardware and True Value owners and see if you can put your cards there at the counter in an Ace Hardware or True Value. Um, we call this grassroots marketing. Um, when you see somebody out in their front yard picking up their weeds, stop by, hand them a card and say, I can do that for you so you don't have to. Um, I'm a big fan of talking to people. So um, it's a lot of grassroots marketing for me on that if I was a, doing the handyman business. Yeah, you know, that was a, the answer I was hoping you would say something very similar to that is, you know, I, I look at uh, where my mom used to live and when she would hire a handyman and that client that you might be targeting as your handyman business may not be the most uh, adept at being on social media or some of those avenues. So no one where your target customer is and it, it might be that grassroots, that talking to people, saying hi getting those recommendations from another neighbor that used your services. Um, so yeah, grassroots can go a long way depending on the type of the business. So Absolutely. Um, great way, I think, to finish up uh, with this session. Um, Craig, we appreciate your time and your expertise um, and sharing that with us. Thank you. Everybody, thank you for joining us today. We uh, look forward to seeing you on Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Until then, everybody have a safe week and we will see you on Thursday.